In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Very warm welcome to this Mass. It's good to be back after a couple of weeks of leave. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against thee and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve thee in newness of life, to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art the Most High in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your Church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with a sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with a sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, 
when you arrive. You shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Mahola, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. I will hear what the Lord God has to say, a voice that speaks of peace. His help is near for those who fear him, and his glory will dwell in our land. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. Mercy and faithfulness have met. Justice and peace have embraced. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice look down from heaven. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. The Lord will make us prosper, and our earth shall yield its fruit. Justice shall march before him, and peace shall follow his steps. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. A reading from the Epistle to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart, that is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with a heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with a mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between, between Jew and Greek, The same is Lord of all and is generous to all, so call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim it? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. My soul is waiting for the Lord. I count on his word. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory is he. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. 
But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord. May I speak to the glory of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I wonder if you remember the first time you decided for yourself or realised that God was real or realised God was at work in the world around you. When we think of conversion experiences, when we think of the awareness of God's presence, quite often we start to think about Paul or Saul, converted on the road to Damascus. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Jesus asked. And at that moment, Saul's whole life was changed as he realises Jesus truly is the Messiah. Or maybe we think about something like John Wesley, that moment halfway through a sermon that he realised his heart was strangely warmed and is filled with the Holy Spirit. So often we think about these dramatic events and think, well, nothing like that ever happens to me. Does that mean I've not experienced God? And then we can get a bit disappointed. For most of us, much of our faith, all of our faith has been without dramatic interventions from God. We just gradually came to realise that we were Christians and can't pinpoint when that happened unless we put down something like our date of baptism or confirmation. And so we move on to the first reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah is a prophet in touch with God, passing on God's word. Passing on God's word to those who have not been following the right way. And so telling them with minimal effect, sort yourselves out. You might think God the Almighty would be present in something grand to Elijah. Something in keeping with the power of God. A mighty wind, is God there? No. An earthquake following the wind, is God there? No. A fire following the earthquake following the wind, is God there? No. Anything of wind, earthquake or fire would have illustrated the power of God, surely. So where was God? We hear in the sound of sheer silence. Elijah experienced God, met God in the silence, not in anything dramatic. not in anything you might think suitable for a meeting with the Almighty, but rather in silence. When everything had been stripped away, when the dramatic things had ceased, there was God, completely against any expectations anyone might have about what God might or should do. We live in a world where the more dramatic, the more over-the-top 
the better. Things so often seem to have been done for effect. If an organisation provides a grant to a group, there's normally a photo opportunity with a cheque which is at least this big being held by them. Because the bigger the cheque, the better. It gives a big effect. It doesn't matter if it only says £5 on it. It's a massive cheque, so it's something big and important. Handing over a normal-sized cheque wouldn't look to be the same. It wouldn't have the same effect for those watching. The bigger effect, the more dramatic shows, the better, the more, the merrier. In fact, in some ways, we don't really like quiet. We don't really like it when nothing much is happening. Think about the time when there's a period of silence within the church service, and so often people start getting jumpy and fidgety because they don't know what's happening because it's silent, and this is uncomfortable. But God, all-powerful, doesn't just work in ways we might want. God doesn't just work in massive shows of power, demonstrations of power to show other people his glory. God also meets us where we are, in our worries, in our concerns, when everything else seems lost and forsaken in unexpected places, where there appears to be no hope, when all the big shows of power and influence have, no, ma have made no difference, there is God. We see this happening in the Gospel. There's the wind. But is that where God is? Is that where God's power is revealed? No. Peter gets the courage to walk on water. He trusts Jesus. But then... It all goes. Doubt, worry, that sinking feeling. And so with all the defences gone, Peter couldn't do anything himself and he realises he can't do anything so he cries out, Lord, save me. In that moment, not because of any great show of power, not because of the wind or fire or earthquake, God was revealed in an undramatic way. God was revealed to a normal, doubting, struggling person. Someone who called out from that place of helplessness, that place of hopelessness, that position of vulnerability. Lord, help me. I don't know about you, but there are times I end up in that place. Everything feels hopeless and lost. Maybe at that time, in that place, we think or hope that God could or should rescue us in some dramatic way. Hearing the voice of Jesus speaking to us or having our heart strangely warmed by the Holy Spirit. But by focusing on looking for some dramatic intervention by God. Maybe, just maybe, we then forget to look into that silence and emptiness for God's presence and call out, Lord, save me. When things are difficult, may this be our plea, Lord, save me. And let us listen in the quiet, in the stillness, in the peacefulness, when all the distractions are stripped away for God. The Lord was in the sound of sheer silence.
So shall we stand as we declare our faith in God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. O God, the creator and preserver of all, we pray for people in every kind of need. Make your ways known on earth, your saving health among all nations. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church. Guide and govern us by your good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit and the bonds of peace and in righteousness of life. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body or estate. Comfort and relieve them in their need. Give them patience in their sufferings and bring good out of all their afflictions. We pray especially at this time for Janet LePage, Pat Smith, Tony Hamill, Barry Linacor, Hilary Brown, Josh Barbe, Julia Bentley and Father John Widows. Lord, in thy mercy. We remember those who have gone before us in the peace of Christ, and we give you praise for all your faithful ones with whom we rejoice at the communion of saints. Praying for those who have died recently among them, Margaret Membre, and those whose years mind us at this time among them, Ernest Greenfield, June Fowler, Ruby Biavenu, Raymond Ozan, Gordon Brown, and Norma Gavi, Lord, in thy mercy. Be with us, Lord, in all our prayers and direct our way towards the attainment of salvation, that among the changes and chances of this mortal life, we may always be defended by your gracious help through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we stand for the peace. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in him. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Blessed art thou, O Lord, God of all creation, for of thy bounty we have received this bread which we offer unto thee, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, whence it shall cover us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed art thou, O Lord, God of all creation, for of thy bounty we have received this wine which we offer unto thee, fruit of the divine work of human hands, whence it shall come for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto the O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, and only Son, our Lord. For he is the great High Priest, who has loosed us from our sins, and has made us to be a royal priesthood unto thee, our God and Father. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we must humbly beseech thee, and grant that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may we partake of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that is betrayed, when he given thanks to the he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me likewise after supper he took the cup when he given thanks to thee he gave it to them saying drink ye all of this for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you have a drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, having in remembrance the precious death and passion of thy dear Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness and mercy to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son Jesus Christ, and through faith of his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all the be unworthy for our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice. Yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences. And to God will we, who are partakers of this holy communion, may be fulfilled with our grace and heavenly benediction through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to the Father Almighty, world without end. 
Amen. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, for who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. O thou God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O thou God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who taketh away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive thee, but only say the word, and I shall be with thee. Let us pray. Holy Father, who gathered us here around the table of your Son 
to share this meal with a whole household of God in that new world where you reveal the fullness of your peace. Gather people of every race and language to share in the eternal banquet of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank thee for feeding us with the body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we offer thee our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of thy Spirit to live and work to thy praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.